Hey, hey, it's Monday morning. Hope you've all had a good weekend. Um, I'm just gonna head up into the woods now and get a look at this 160 high track. Um, the fella's saying that he's using about 20 litres of AdBlue a day, which is excessive, so there's something amiss there. Hopefully we'll uh, find out what it is, but it's one of those problems really, you don't know until it's done a day's work whether or not you've sorted it, so um, yeah, it should be an interesting uh, should be an interesting trip up there. It's back through the uh, RAF base again, so um, I will go and get a look. Plugged onto the machine now. Um, it's got a full tank of Ad Blue, and I've got the software out here. So the machine's done 2,300 hours, and this is logging what the machine's doing over its life. So I can see that it's done sort of getting on towards 1,400 hours, 1,800 to 1,900 RPM, and over 600 hours at uh, 19 to 2,000 RPM and it's spent less than 150 hours below 1200 rpm so i know that the engine has been working i can also see that in the engine load section here as well um, the machine needs high temperatures in the exhaust to treat the emissions so that's often achieved with high rpm and also high engine load and um, so everything looks like it is working as it should be um, but while we're using so much ad blue um, I'm gonna have to go and find out right I'm using the engine software now on my laptop um, first thing I'm doing is checking that the software uh, for the ad blue pump and the ECU are up to date which they are so I'm now gonna look for any sort of stored fault codes or historic fault codes Right, I'm into the logged um, error codes that the machine's had. So although the machine isn't currently showing any error codes, um, in the logged error codes, just not even 50 hours ago, um, there was a failure of the uh, NH3 sensor. So what the NH3 sensor does is, as the machine is dosing add blue in, treating the emissions, if it puts too much ad blue into the system and it doesn't get burnt off efficiently, that NH3 sensor then tells the ad blue pump in the ECU that there's too much ad blue going in there. And um, if that sensor isn't working, then there's nothing to tell the ad blue pump to sort of dial back the dosing. So that could be the cause as to why it's using so much ad blue. So I'm going to go and remove the ad blue. Uh, the, exhaust cover there and um, change that sensor out so I know I've got my error code for the NH3 sensor but what, was, uh, what I have also done is um, dip the tank and made sure that what we've got in the tank is up to spec up to standard and um, so you just look through the uh, sight glass there and I'll put a picture in it's um, it's showing sort of 32 and a half, 33 percent, which is what it should be. So I know that the ad blue that's in the tank is good, and um, because obviously if the uh, urea level is less than 33 percent, then it's going to use more ad blue to treat the emissions. So I know that the stuff in the tank is good. This is the NH3 sensor, um, not much to look at. I think in there it's some sort of ceramics or something like that. But anyway, 
And what you might not have caught in the video is that the NH3 sensor um, is detecting the uh, ammonia. So if there's a lot of ammonia, then that is unburnt, unused, add blue. Um, so obviously if this sensor isn't working, then the add blue controller doesn't know how much or how little add blue to dose in there. So hence why we've got excessive add blue consumption. So I've put a new sensor in. I'm just gonna put my laptop on now again and run it through an after treatment test and, uh, and see how it goes after that. Right, so while I was on site, I tried to show you sort of how the after treatment ad blue system works on the uh, on that particular machine but uh, when I've watched it back you can't hear any of the uh, any of what I'm saying really so on the after treatment side of things you've got the ad blue pump so that talks to the ECU via the CAN network which we've already had a bit of a look at in previous videos so that's that is drawing the ad blue out of the tank and delivering it up to this ad blue injector. So that's the nozzle tip there. It's inserted just before the mixer tube after the DOC. So that's spraying a fine mist of ad blue into the mixer tube. The mixer tube is what it says in the tin. It creates a swirling effect and mixes the ad blue in with the, um, in with the exhaust emissions from the machine. It then goes through the SCR and out the tailpipe and in the tailpipe you've got a NOx outlet sensor so this is a downstream NOx sensor you've also got an upstream NOx sensor which looks very similar but it's got a black wire and <clears throat> um, so the downstream NOx sensor it's getting a reading of the emissions coming straight out of the engine and then it's gone through all the after treatment system and we've got this one checking the emissions before it leaves the tailpipe and then just after this just after this downstream NOx we've got this this is the NH3 sensor that we had problems with and as I've already said this is sort of detecting the amount of ad blue that isn't getting treated um, or isn't getting burnt off in the SCR so this one was the fault So I don't want to turn this into a bit of a lecture about Ad Blue, but uh, obviously it's sort of the first time really that we've got an Ad Blue fault on the channel, so I thought I'd do a little bit about it. Um, my advice to people would be to treat it as though you're going to drink it. So when you're handling it, make sure that your hands or your gloves are reasonably clean um, to avoid contamination in the tank. Um, and also, best advice for folk, I would say, is just use brand new 20 litre drums at a time as and when you need it rather than storing it in an IBC. Yeah, it's cheaper to buy in bulk, but if it's not used if it, if it's not used quickly, then the ad blue quality can degrade and cause issues. Also as well, filling the same drum or the same 20 litre drum with ad blue, the way I described it to folk, it's a bit like um, having a pint glass with orange squash in it. If you drink three quarters of your glass of orange squash and then put the same amount of squash into it and then fill it up again eventually you'll end up with a much stronger concentrated uh, orange squash or add blue in this case so just buy 20 litres at a time and um, it might be cheaper in the short run to save a bit of money buying in bulk but when these sensors cost five or six hundred quid your add blue pump there that could be twelve hundred quid and um, it does sort of put things into perspective so keep it clean keep it out of direct sunlight keep it at the right temperature or even better just buy 20 litres at a time so yeah there you go add blue i don't particularly like it and um, quite a lot of the fault finding that we have to do on add blue systems can be a bit tedious and it can take up to a week for the fault to reappear so you think you've got it and uh, within a week's running time the machine throws a fault code up again so it's not the best but just got to live with it so obviously in this case it was component failure but i have been to so many machines now where it hasn't been component failure and it's been 
operator error where they've grabbed a drum that they thought was a clean empty drum it's had remnants of diesel or oil or some sort of contaminants in it and it's um, basically caused havoc in the after treatment system I mean by the time you've flushed the system best case scenario or you've had to replace parts it soon adds up and it's just not worth it so yeah new drums every time anyway i'm back at the yard now so i'm uh, i'm gonna go in and uh, put some of this warranty information through to me warranty administrator up at hq and um, i'll probably log it to another training course before the end of the day right i've got some training done got me stuff sent off and uh, it's just after five o'clock so i'm gonna call it a day tomorrow i'm actually heading out of my normal working area i'm heading down south um, there's a 27 um, that's on hire from a local plant hire firm up this way um, and it's a two and a half ton digger and it's coughing and spluttering and misbehaving so um, I'll go down there and sort that out hopefully. So thanks very much for watching if you haven't already don't forget to hit the subscribe button ring the little bell um, oh, and I've also set up Instagram now as well so you can go over there and find me it's uh, Ali's Digger Diary on Instagram and um, so I'll put pictures up of uh, what I'm up to in between videos so there's something to look forward to maybe and um, yeah share a few digger pictures if you're into that kind of thing <laughs> so right smashing uh, I'll see you in Wednesday's video one more thing as well before I finish it is my sister-in-law's birthday and my wife told us I have to shout her out on YouTube so I'm sure she'll appreciate that. Happy birthday. <laughs> See you this evening.